Hello everybody and welcome back to a bit of scrumping. <laughs> I think that every week that you watch this video my hair is going to get uh, longer and longer and I should make my glasses bigger and bigger. It would be, it would be a fun uh, expedition. Uh, so last week we took our onion dyed papers and we added some little notebooks. Uh, if nobody knows what I'm talking about, you might want to head to episode one first and I'm going to put the link in the description below. We are creating a scrumping junk journal. We are using bits and pieces from things we find to make a, a gorgeous junk journal. And I've got a few bits and pieces that I want to try and use today to create something to actually sit behind this pocket. Now I know a few of you have contacted me already to say that my my screen when I'm talking to you is a little bit fuzzy and that's because I've got a delightful scratch <laughs> across the lens that looks at me. So I look all sort of romantic and blurred but we'll deal with it. <laughs> the most important thing happens when I turn the camera around so let's do that right now and uh, let's have some fun. So I've got a little tray here of uh, goodies that I'm going to use in my expedition of foraging and scrumping today. Uh, the first one is um, something that some of you may have or may not have, which is an eyelet maker. Um, I want to create, and I've got a specific idea in mind, I want to create some little um, cards to go inside those tuck pockets that we, um, we made last week. Um, I've got some sellotape and I've got my trusted hole punch again and we're going to combine these two things with some proper scrumping which is that I have put some flowers into my flower press uh, over the last week and I've had them pressed really tightly some flowers and leaves and grasses and I want to use those with some sellotape to make something quite fun. Uh, I've got this book um, which I found in the charity shop uh, or the op shop which is a book with um, matte pages in it of information on flowers and I thought this would go really well with the theme that we're doing anyway. I quite like the writing side and I quite like the flowers as well and I'm going to kind of use both. And finally, um, for those of you who, like me, enjoy rescuing things from Facebook Marketplace, uh, I happened to be able to rescue a box full of goodies recently. And one of those boxes was a whole box full, I've got even more than this, of um, A4 window envelopes. And we're actually going to be using half of this envelope this week. And then I'm going to save all the others to do something with next week um, and some of these which are a4 folders okay so we're going to use a combination of all of this the idea that I've got um, is to make some cards now I'm not going to be using the whole thing it would be easy to just shove the whole thing in there I'm actually just going to have one side rather than both sides purely um, because I want to use as much as I can over the time and I might need to use some more cardboard later and also I don't want to make my pockets too thick too soon. So um, I'm going to make use some of this, I'm going to use some scissors, I'm going to use some glue and we're going to make some really beautiful collage cards that are just going to sit inside those pockets with a little bit of writing space on it for people as well. So stay with me, I'm going to do as normal, I'm going to speed things up, I'm going to put some little comments in the background, I'll stop every time I do something new and explain what I'm doing but let's have some scrumping fun. <laughs> Gonna let the sun shine in the day I'm trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out mm -hmm. I'm gonna 
gonna let the sun shine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of people talking And the wind blowing in the trees Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly starts to fade feels like things are gonna go my way i'm gonna let the sun shine in the day i'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke and i will try to fix what has been broken take this so now i've got all of these boards uh pasted and these are just kind of the writing and we're going to put some colour on these in a minute and um, a very secret little pocket. Um, what I want to do is I want to pale this out a little bit so that the text isn't so um, isn't such the contrasting thing. I want this to be a little bit darker and I want these to look like really old pages. Um, so what I've got is I have got some water uh, I have got a little ramekin dish and I've got some of this. This is walnut granules, walnut ink, and it's relatively cheap. You can buy this um, fairly inexpensively um, from eBay, uh, but you could also use coffee granules. You could use anything like that to do exactly what I'm going to do and it would have exactly the same effect. I just quite like the idea that this is a botanical journal and these are walnuts. So... You need a very small amount of these and some water. I'm going to blend that up. I've got a fairly old paintbrush here and I'm going to start by just flicking the pages randomly with some of the ink. And then what I'm going to do, um, you know, imagine pages where you've put a cup down and the coffee's kind of spilt on. So I'm going to use this ramekin dish. You're going to see me paint the edge of it with some walnut ink and then I'll use this as a stamp um, and I might just uh, accent some of the areas just to make it a bit stronger. Um, most of this I'm going to kind of do in the upper portion of the page because the bottom of it is going to be um, covered with a little pocket that we're going to do in a minute. But let's get on with this bit. That it's unsaid, words be spoken And I'll let my mind be carried by the waves Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly my fine weathered friends now for you guys it's been a matter of seconds between then and now for me it's been about three weeks <laughs> because uh, so much has happened and one of the things that's happened is I've been on a beautiful trip to France and whilst I was over there of course I did some scrumping and found some delicious things and one of those delicious things has altered the course a little bit of today's session because what I had originally planned to do with these folders and, and in fact you saw me talk about it at the beginning was use some window envelopes to create some pockets at the bottom of here with a little bit of our William Morris paper etc etc but um, when I came to kind of mock that up, it felt like the envelopes were really too big for what is actually going to be quite a simple little beautiful uh, thing to go in our uh, tuck places. And so when I was in France uh, doing some scrumping, I came across this box full, full of little tiny, um, firstly they are like little tiny uh, receipts um, or invites 
and the other thing that's in here are these cute little envelopes which are obviously all stained with age and I got them and I came back and I decided you know what these are going to be much nicer on here and I can use those window envelopes for a project later on um, we won't waste anything I promise so apologies to those who have been kind of working through this video as you start. Change of mind. I have looked online. You can buy tiny little envelopes like this online relatively cheaply. And if you wanted to age yours up so they're kind of looking similar to this, then obviously you just need to get your buckets of tea out and, and stain them. Um, but I'm going to do with these. I'm obviously in luck because they are already pre-stained. Um, so what my plan is to do with these is that I'm going to um, distress them a little bit, put some colour on them. Um, you're going to see me using distress ink on a plastic board and then kind of just dabbing these in just to give them a little bit of a bloom of colour. Um, I am then going to put these on here and I am going to sew, um, I'm going to open this flap up and I'm going to sew round these edges. So just these three, this one, this one, this one. And that's because I want to make that a little pocket for a tab. Um, which I'm going to talk about in a minute and I also want to be able to open this up and put a little stash of paper in there. So the tab. Now when we were making our um, these little folders to go in, um, obviously I've got loads of cut off bits, bits of paper and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to make a tab, a tag, I'm going to use my tag punch to do that um, and then I'm going to make a little circle inside them all. So I'll just do one on here just so that you can see it. So I'm going to make a circle like so. And then I'm going to use some wide sellotape and I'm going to put a wide piece of sellotape on there. And then I. So as I was saying before the postman arrived, <laughs> I'll stick a bit of sticky tape over here. I will pop uh, various flowers I've got. I've got some um, leaves here that I can put in there. I've got some beautiful petals off of the tree that I can put in there. And I can lay them out in various different ways. You know, you don't have to have loads of pressed flowers. If you don't have pressed flowers, of course, I'm, you know, head into the scrumping. I'm sure you've got stickers or something that you could put into there. So I'll do that. I'll make that little uh, sticky tape window and then I will sew around that or we'll do something around it to make it look lovely um, and finish that all off. So, I'm going to get my distress oxides out, I'm going to get my sewing machine out, I'm going to get some sticky tape out, I'm going to get so many bits and pieces out, but for you I'm going to turn on some music, I'll speed up the process a little bit and um, let's finish these boards. My envelopes are all dry and I just realised as I came to show you these that my camera was not on and showing how I got these lovely watery marks and Distress Ink um, does this beautiful thing when you use it like a sort of watercolour which is that you get these puddles with these dark edges around the outside. So um, I'm just going to do one just to show you how I did it very quickly. So essentially it's very easy, you get your uh, Distress ink, let's use this blue and we put a few pads on, just use it as a square. So this is just a plastic bit of sheet. Uh, so I've got some green on there and then I'll put some yellow on. So you just do the same thing. 
just padding it like that. Now, if I took the plastic off of the back of here as well, I'm going to see it a bit clearer. So there's some, can you see the squares of colour on there? And then I'm just going to spray that like this so that you get these little droplety beads of colour. And then all you do is take your envelopes, however many you're going to press in, and just put them on top of those beads of colour like that, squish them down, lift them up and you get these lovely kind of watery colour combinations. So that's all I've done with the Distress ink uh, to end up with a load of different coloured ones and obviously in between I just give that a dry and then let them air dry and I've got quite a few here to choose from so my next stage is going to be going through my boards making sure they fit inside the little um, pockets uh, sewing these down I'm probably going to put a bit of distress oxide just around the edge of them just to to seal them in and as I said I'm just sewing around these edges here just because that's all that I want to stick down. Um, I'll see you when that's done.
stage where I've got all my elements to finish off these file folders in our um, little tuck spots and just to talk through um, these little bits you saw me put a eyelet punch in there and this bit here is just some sari ribbon now that normally comes quite scrunched up in a in a tight ball but all I do is iron it flat uh, and that's because what I wanted to be able to do is when this goes into my tuck spot, it's got to be able to lay as flat as possible. I don't want too much bulk. So I've uh, ironed these so they're not too bulky. And then instead of tying them, I've just sewn them with um, the same colour thread that I used to sew around the envelopes. So these are those little envelopes that we dyed using some Distress ink. I've sewn all the way around the three sides with the envelope flap open. Um, I've got my little tuck spot and I want to show you what we're gonna do next. Now I have prepped one up ready to go so I can show you. So when you open this, what you can see first of all is those um, uh, dymo punched words down the side. So this one is prune. The envelope, now the reason that I chose to sew it first is because what I didn't want is any sewing marks on the back of here because this is a, a blank sheet for people to work on or, or do whatever. But I wanted that to remain blank. So what I've actually done is I've glued this down with my craft glue, which is really strong. This is a Tombow craft glue. I use that all the time. So that's nice and strong. Um, and I've popped around it uh, a similar color thread. This is actually another bit of scrumpage. This is from uh, an old silk factory in France and it's uh, quite thick um, silk thread. There's sort of like four strands with it and I had a bit left over so I'm going to use that. And I've just stuck that at the back of the envelope and then put two little um, micro beads on the end just to show the ends of the knot and that just helps keep that envelope closed. Now at the moment I haven't put anything in the envelope. I'm thinking we might do that later on. And then uh, my little uh, tag that just sits nicely in the top of there. As I said, I've glued that down. So let's do one together and then I'll do the rest and speed them up. So uh, the first thing I need is one of my sheets that's got the folder in it. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take my envelope, leave some of these threads. I think that's quite nice. But cut a little bit of that off. Oh, while I'm talking to you, I just wanted to show you this little gadget that I've recently bought. So this I got on eBay. It cuts corners, quite literally. Um, so you've got three different uh, sides here that you can put your piece in. And it just finishes tags off really nicely, gives it a rounded corner rather than having a, a flat edge. So just a little tip. It cost me, I think, $4.99. So that's quite a good gadget. So I'm going to grab my little... Thing here. I'm going to grab a length of this silk thread and then what I'm going to do is tie two knots that are relatively in the middle and this is to stop because they're going to be stuck to the back with sellotape and what tends to happen is when you stick something with sellotape it quite often when you're pulling it a lot it pulls through the sellotape and these two knots just give it a bit of a grip to stop that happening so they need to be big enough or the gap between the top dots needs to be small enough that it's going to fit under your sellotape okay so we're going to go slightly to the edge just for fun slightly to the edge like that rather than directly in the middle and then I'm going to get a piece of sellotape 
and stick that down, being careful not to stick it round the edges because I want to glue that. So that's stuck down. Then what I'm going to do is just glue my edges just the three edges like so pop that down near the bottom like that now then I'm going to take a micro needle these are really good these ones they're called wide-eyed micro bead needles and they're wide-eyed you probably can't see that it's so fine they're wide-eyed because when you put your thumb in between you can open it up like that and you get this really wide needle which makes it much easier to thread I always find micro beading needles really tricky put my thread on there and then I've got pink and green in these little wooden micro beads just one on each what this does really is it stops the ends of your thread fraying but also just you know it's a bit of decoration isn't it on the envelope so I'm going to put that bead there and I'm not going to tie a I'm going to tie a knot around the bead, letting my tail go round twice on the first knot, that just secures it slightly better. That's a normal, a normal knot that you would make, you just make the tail go round twice on the first one. Like that. Trim that. Let's do the second one. Thread through, find the bead, Oop. drop it on the floor, <laughs> get another one. And I often find micro bead necklaces in thrift stores and charity shops, and you know, I take them apart and save them all. Okay, so exactly the same, just doing a bog standard knot, but putting my tail through twice. Tying another knot on the top. Just trim that off and then what we can do is just tie this up. in a bow like that okay so let's get one of these um, words this one is flourish peel that off put that on there and then get Tag for this one, pop it in there, all done, ready to go in our folder. Okay, I'll speed the process up and get the rest done and then we're done.
So I am really enjoying these. I really like the look of them. I like all the thread. I like all the beads. I love this little window of flower and it's different on every single one. Um, I put this little brad on these, this little eyelet, uh, and I have it in mind later on that I might put something on there, like a hook or something, or or I'll just leave it like that, I don't know yet, but um, there's loads of writing spots on here, obviously the tags people could write on, uh, the back of these boards people could write on, um, you know, this is a junk journal after all, but also I think part of the point of doing a junk journal um, is that it's eye candy you know it's the that fear of the blank page it's that you don't arrive on a blank page you arrive on something that's full of inspiration and certainly um i've got some ideas of what i might put in these envelopes just something little at some point which um will be something about inspiration but um for now this is where we're at and obviously i've got four sets of words so i've got harvest so let's find all the harvest ones and let's just let's talk very quickly about different things you could put on here you know you don't have to use you don't have to go out and buy uh, anything and in fact I really desperately don't want you to do that the point of this whole series is that that you watch me kind of scrump um, you know if you've got a typewriter you could type some words and put them in there you could use your stamps and stamp that you could uh, cut it out of letters you know you, you maybe you don't even put the same words on any of these. Um, I'm doing four journals so I need to do four things the same and I'm just kind of showing you how to make on bulk um, and if you are making one, if you are journeying along with me please uh, head to the group, I'll put the description in the link below where you will find many other people that are playing along. So I've got Harvest, I've got Bloom, find the other bloom I've got prune as a word it's four of those and I've got flourish so obviously when I come to um, put my journals together I will make sure that each journal has one of each um, and what I've tried to do, though, I, you know, I didn't consciously make them this way, I've tried to make my tags pattern-wise fit the little envelopes as much as I possibly can. And just a note to say that also, um, if you remember, I put that bit of sellotape over the back of this thread, and it's meant that there's a really nice glide uh, as you put that tag in, you know, it doesn't um, stick or... Uh, rustle up against the paper. So, time to put them all in. Um, and the idea, so just find ones that they fit in. So I did cut them all down to size, but obviously, you know, in the process of making them, they've all got jumbled up. You know, the idea is that these ribbons kind of dance outside a little bit just to make a suggestion of something being in there and that tab sits outside like that so uh, that's part three done um, took a lot more time to get this one out than the other two but I'm back in England now and back putting this little project together for you um, let's see what we do next week all right <laughs> speak to you soon bye mm -hmm.